What a dilemma. Surgical augmentation versus prosthetic. The good news is that we've got someone of tremendous insight to help us with those decisions. I always love having the opportunity to introduce one of our Seattle Study Club members who is also a world-class lecturer and educator as well as a full-time practicing prosthodontist. This morning, I hope you will join me in welcoming for the next hour our very dear friend, Dr. Tal Moore. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Sandy. I want to thank uh, Michael Cohen and the Seattle Study Club for giving me this opportunity to be here with you this morning. Uh, my screen on my computer is a little bit different. Okay, so really when we look at a beautiful smile, this happens to be my wife's smile, so I think it's beautiful, and we ask ourselves, why is the pink important? If you look at it, you'll realize that the pink actually helps to define the cervical contour of the teeth. It defines proportion or helps us create symmetry in the smile. And in fact, if you look at the literature, it shows that in the aesthetic smile, the papilla is visible during, during 91 to 100 percent of the time when you talk to a person or when they're laughing. And so in each individual, even though you may not think the papilla is important, it's important. How many of you have patients that come to your office and they're what I call LLs, lip lifters? Okay? In my practice, that's every patient. So for me, the soft tissue is very critical. There are generally three pink aesthetic scenarios, and there's classifications in the literature. Kay wrote a classification as well. But generally, you'll see three pink aesthetic scenarios. The first will be when the pink is ideal. In that case, ideal aesthetics can be achieved with porcelain laminate veneers. Whether they're prepped or non-prepped, that's up to you. But it's basically an ideal scenario. In the second scenario, we have a pink issue that we need to manage, either with orthodontics or surgery. But in the second scenario, it's manageable. While in the third scenario, we have an unmanageable situation where surgery is not predictable or the patient has really high expectations, you need to consider maybe using artificial pink. So how do you decide between the last two scenarios which scenario you're dealing with? How do you make the decision in terms of where you need to go with this case? So that brings us to the topic of today's lecture, which is surgical versus prosthetic options to achieve ideal tooth and soft tissue form. And we're going to talk about biologic limitations. As long as we understand what the biologic limitations are, then we know which direction we need to go. And we're going to try to break that down into teeth versus implants. So let's talk about teeth real quick. If we do our diagnostic evaluation for teeth, we have to ask ourselves, is the soft tissue ideal or not? And when I say soft tissue, I mean the soft tissue margins in the papilla. If it's ideal, then we can go ahead and do our restorative procedure, assuming that structurally the teeth are OK. If the answer is no, then we have some options. We may want to do some crown lengthening, connective tissue grafting, maybe some orthodontics, maybe even some pink ceramics, or a combination of those uh, options that we have. So if we look at this individual who in 2006 went to see the orthodontist, you notice that he, he has a smile like a vampire. He doesn't like his smile. And the orthodontist said, oh, you know what? I think I can fix you with Invisalign. And if you look intraorally, you'll notice he has severe class 2 div 2 bite with severe erosion on the lingual aspect of the upper anterior teeth. Okay, So now there's a functional issue as well not just an aesthetic. And so in 2009, he went back to the orthodontist because he wasn't sure from 2006 to 2009 what to do. The orthodontist put on the Invisalign attachments, and after about a year, he realized that things weren't really going the way he expected. And so in 2000, later in 2000, it's actually 2010, he went to see another orthodontist uh, who was a friend of mine, and at that point, he directed them in the, in the right direction, which is putting brackets on the teeth. And so at that point, he referred them to my office and said, can you help me position these teeth so you can restore these teeth later on? And that's how we work together.